So sometimes you may have heard that a function gets infinitely large at some point. Right? And so what does this mean, infinitely large? Okay, so if we think about this scientifically again, right, let's say we're trying to measure the temperature of, let's say, the sun, right? If we stick our thermometer near the sun, it might just explode, okay? But, you know, if we were getting some alien technology or something, then maybe we'd be able to get a thermometer that was sensitive enough that it could measure the extreme heat of the sun, right? So we'd say that a measurement would be infinitely large, if it exceeds the capacity of every possible measuring device, even the ones we haven't invented yet. Right, so if you truly can never measure it, then it has to be, you know, infinitely big, right? So infinitely hot to destroy every single thermometer that you could ever create, ever. Of any and every possible measuring device. Okay, it just kind of exceeds you know, comprehension. It exceeds our observational capacity. Way too big of what, you know, whatever value it is. So if it's, you know, numbers of stars, then maybe you just never count infinitely many of them. Okay, but for a function, we can say, uh, you know, our function will be infinitely large when, you know, we can no longer, you know, we can't ever, you know, catch that value. So let's start with the function. It gets infinitely big at a point. Right? So an example of that would be f of x equal to 1 over x squared. Right? So if you were to look at this, right, if you were to look at x versus the function, right, and if you look near zero, right, the limit of this function of x as x goes to zero, right, that's limit as x goes to zero of 1 over x squared. Right? If you think about it, right, in the previous video I said that you have to check whether the limit on the bottom is zero. Right? If this is not zero, then we can do division, but it is zero. So we can't plug in equal zero to find the limit. Right? We're not allowed to do that because then we'd be dividing by zero. So instead, let's look at some values. So if we look at x equals 1, f of x is 1. If we look at x equals 0 0.1, right, f of x is 1 over 0.1 squared, which is 1 over 0 0.01, which is 100. Right, if we look at x equals 0 0.0, 0 0.01, right, then this becomes 1 over 0 0.01 squared, which is 1 over 0 0.00. 0, 1, which is 10,000, okay, or, I think I got that right, that's 10,000, right, and if I get even closer to 0, right, 0, 0.000001, right, then this gives me 1 times 10 to the 6th, right, so as I get closer to 0, these numbers are just exploding, right, they're getting gigantic. And if I go from the other side, right, let's say let's start from negative 1, well, f of x is 1, right, since the negative gets canceled out square, right, if I look at negative 0 0.1, then this becomes 100, if I look at negative 0 0.01, I get 10,000 again, if I look at negative 0 0.001, I get 10 sixth, right, these are the same as those because it's the square, so the square cancels. Right, so if I'm looking from the left or the right of zero, these function values are just increasing beyond our capacity to kind of get close to zero. As cl closer we get to zero, the bigger our function value gets. Right, so if we look at the graph of this, okay, so here it is in decimals. I have one over x squared. Here's my function, right? And if I look near zero, right, let's zoom in near zero, right, it just gets taller and taller. Maybe I want to zoom out, right? As you get closer to zero, this function just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay? And, you know, if I want to zoom into zero, right, I have to keep scrolling, right? And as I scroll up, as I'm going up in the function value, 
I am getting closer to x equal zero. Okay, so this is a case where we say, okay, the limit of this function at x equal zero is clearly going to infinity. Right? Let me switch back. Notes. Right? We would say that the limit as x goes to zero of one over x squared is infinity. Right? Keeps getting bigger and bigger the closer we get to this x point. The limit itself just keeps growing and growing and growing. So the limit is infinite. If we were to plug in zeros, we wouldn't be able to evaluate it. But if we plug in numbers that are close to zero, the closer we get to zero, the bigger our function becomes. That means that the limit is approaching infinity. Right? It's not. It's not really reaching any number. Right? This is not a number. It's just kind of a direction. Right? So it's increasing. It means the function is increasing. Forever as x goes. Right? The closer we get to zero, the more our function increases. Okay, let's do another one where now it's going to negative infinity. Right? Uh, f of x is now going to be negative 1 over x squared. Okay, so we'll just jump over the decimal so I don't want to write out the big, big one then. When f of x is negative 1 over x squared, the opposite happens, right? Only thing we've changed here is instead of a plus sign, it's a minus sign. So now as we get closer to 0, right, the function becomes more and more negative, right? And so if you zoom out, it just looks like a straight line. On zoom in, right, I'm getting really close to 0 as my x value, and my y value is just going, shooting off bigger and bigger negative numbers. Okay? So we would say that in this case, in this case, the limit of this function, x goes to 0 of negative 1 over x squared, is negative infinity, which is, again, not a real number, right? Negative infinity is not a number. The same way that infinity is not a number. It means that the function decreases forever, right? Ever, and reaches, you know, bigger and bigger negative numbers, right? Bigger in the sense of, of their magnitude, right? So we go like negative thousand, negative ten thousand, and so on. Bigger and bigger negative numbers as x goes to zero. Okay, let's do another type of function where this can happen. Right? Another function where this happens is 1 over x. Right? Again, if we were to look at the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 over x, if we were to plug in the limit on the bottom, that would be 0, so we're not allowed to just plug in 0. Because then you have a number over 0, you divide by 0, you can't. Okay, so if we look at what happens in Desmos, let's look. At our graph, okay, the 1 over x, we learn a lot. But what happens is, as we go to 0, okay, it goes to different places, right? On the right, when we have a positive x, right, as x goes to 0 from the right or from above, right, for bigger numbers than 0, as x goes to 0, this is actually going to go off infinity, right? But on the other side, right, for negative numbers, as x goes to zero, this goes to negative infinity. This kind of introduces a, you know, uh, we need to introduce what's called one-sided limits or right-hand limits and left-hand limits to distinguish the, you know, to make sense of the fact that this function is going different places as we approach the same x value. Okay, so from the right, it's going to infinity, but from the left, it's going to negative infinity. Right, so if I switch back, notes, right, this is undefined because it's going in two different directions. It goes in two different directions. So there isn't a single value or even a single direction like infinity or negative infinity that we could say that this function goes to. So instead we'll define uh, or use, you know, one-sided limits. 
right? Which basically just tell you the direction that you approach your point from, right? So from the right-hand side, right? We would say that the limit as x goes to zero from the right or from above, so zero with this little plus sign means from positive numbers or from the right, on the number line from the right, above in terms of the numbers being higher or lower than each other, right? Limit of one over x as x goes to zero from the right is infinity, right? Because we saw that it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And on the left-hand side, right, the limit as x goes to zero from the left or from below, right, with this negative number here, of one over x is now negative. It, it's going to negative infinity from the left, positive infinity from the right. And so to think about where the limit's going from either side, that's what this means here, it doesn't make sense anymore because it's going to two different places. Okay. Another place we use these one-side limits is um, for functions where there's a domain that's kind of one-sided, right? So another example would be f of x equals natural log of x, right? So if we switch over to this, um, let me switch to algebra, Desmos, right? If I look at ln of x, recall that ln of x is not defined for negative numbers, right? So it's only defined for positive numbers. But we can ask the question, okay, what, even if I can't plug in zero, what is the limit of this function as ln goes to zero, as ln of x? What is the limit of ln of x as x goes to zero, right? So as x goes to zero, these numbers shoot off to negative infinity, right? So what that means is that we can define a left-sided, or a right-hand side limit, Right, x goes to zero from the right. right. The domain of this is x has to be in zero to infinity. Right, can't be zero, but it can go up to zero. It can't be a negative number. So we can only define the limit from the right because on the left the function is not defined. But from the right, the limit of ln of x as x goes to zero from the right is negative infinity. Right? Because we saw that it shot off the negative infinity, okay? We can also define one-sided limits for, you know, kind of these arbitrary functions. Let's say we had a function that looked like this, right? Let's say it looks like negative one if x is less than zero, zero if x equals zero, and one if x greater than zero, right? Then what this function looks like is x is right this function is negative one blue negative one right and then here it jumps zero at x equals zero and then it jumps back up to one for positive numbers. here's x my f of x this strange kind of function right? Kind of cooked up to kind of make the point about these limits, right? So it's not defined here or here, but at x equals zero, it's defined at zero, right? So we say that the limit of this function as x goes to zero from the left of f of x is minus one, right? The value here plus one, right? And then the limit of x goes to zero from the right, right? That's one since this is constant. It's approaching one. Down here, it's constant at negative one, and it approaches negative one. So here, the left-hand limit is negative one, the right-hand limit is positive one, and the actual function value at zero is zero. So this is a case where the limit from the left is not equal to the function value, and it's not equal to the limit from the right. Okay? And in general, if the limits from the left and the right agree, then the limit is defined on both sides. But it's not always going to be the case that it's going to be exactly equal to the function value at that point if it's kind of arbitrarily defined like this. Or you know, in the previous one, we had that function that had a hole at a certain point. So it wasn't defined.
defined at that point, but the limit was well defined at that point from both sides was appropriate. Okay. And these, you know, these one side limits are kind of useful for thinking about these uh, functions where they're going off to infinity or negative infinity, but you will probably never in your life see something that's kind of defined uh, in you know, these pieces like this. This is kind of cooked up to make this point about limits. All right. <clears throat>